Right now, local Democratic officials around the country are trying to carve out areas where abortion might remain legal in local areas where the state is ruling it illegal. And, of course, the Supreme Court in Seattle, a council member wants to make it an abortion rights sanctuary. The proposal includes a budget amendment that would make abortion free for anyone from states that have anti-abortion laws and for all Seattle residents. In Louisiana, Orleans Parish District Attorney Jason Williams announcing Friday that his office will not be investigating or pursuing charges against women or doctors who were involved in abortion procedures. Separately, the only abortion clinic in New Orleans has now closed. And in Texas, home to a trigger law that includes the nation's harshest criminal penalties on abortion, one Austin City Council member is, quote, proposing a resolution that would direct the city's police department to make criminal enforcement, arrest, and investigation of abortions its lowest priority and to restrict city funds and city staff from being used to investigate, catalog, or report suspected abortions. I want to bring in that Austin City Council member, Jose Chido Vela, as well as that New Orleans Parish District Attorney, whom I just mentioned, Jason Williams. Thank you both. A councilman, you're holding a special city council meeting on your abortion proposal called the GRACE Act on July 18th, within the 30 days of Texas's trigger law. So your act is classified as a policy recommendation. Explain your legal options here. Well, our legal options are limited. We are bound by Texas law, and Texas law, uh, sadly, has now criminalized abortion. But we do control our own police department. We control our city resources. And so within that, we are directing uh, our city to make it the lowest level priority. In other words, we, we want the police focusing on your you know, sexual assaults and robberies, burglaries, those types of crimes, and put any kind of alleged abortion crime at the very, very bottom of the list. And we also don't want any abortion crimes task forces or you know, special uh, abortion investigation units uh, created and nothing like that. So we're doing everything we can within the kind of the limited powers that we, are, uh, that, that we have. Do you expect, Councilman, um, and, uh, do you expect the Attorney General of the state to come after you and try to stop you from this local enforcement decision? He has a habit of doing that, and Austin has had a difficult relationship with the Texas legislature. But there are a number of other cities in Texas that are considering uh, a similar approach. And there are a number of district attorneys that are also very uncomfortable with uh, prosecuting uh, alleged abortion crimes. So, And we're also we're trying to craft it in such a way as it is legal within state law. They're going to do what they're going to do, but there is urgency because Texas also has a pre-row uh, abortion laws that criminalize abortion from the 1960s, 1950s that are still on the books. And uh, our attorney general is saying that those are now valid now. So abortion could technically be a crime right now, even before the trigger law takes into effect. We're in very murky area, but that is what uh, our uh, attorney general, Ken Paxton, is claiming. To say nothing of the sort of uh, infamous Texas civil law, which is what people have referred to as the bounty law and, and such, which until now at least was held up pending these decisions on Dobbs. Um, so, D.A. Williams, in New Orleans, abortion is now banned in your state. It is your reasoning that this decision about not prosecuting abortion, uh, you said, in part, it would not be wise or prudent to shift our priority from tackling senseless violence happening to our city to investigating the choices women make with regard to their own bodies. How much control will you have over those prosecutions? You know, it's absolutely right. Uh, DAs have a broad discretion about what charges they bring and what charges they don't bring. And I've said it before this court ruling, and I'll say it again today, this office will not shift its priorities in order to prosecute mothers who seek abortions or doctors who perform those. Um, if you really think about this historic leap backwards, uh, it's absolutely going to lead to loss of life for countless women. But despite the deeply flawed logic of this hands made tales esque fantasy of the Trump and his right, there's very little infrastructure in place or being put in place to enforce this or police this or prosecute this. It's very similar to what they did when they put women and children in cages. Uh, because of immigration status. There was no new resources or no new protocols for immigration courts to handle those cases. That same thing is happening now. So despite 
the court's decision, this office will continue to stand up for the women of New Orleans. Now, if I'm correct, I didn't Governor Gov Governor Edwards come forward, a Democratic governor, come forward with tougher abortion laws for Louisiana over the weekend? Absolutely right. Uh, the governor and, unfortunately, the legislature was, were working uh, even prior to the Supreme Court uh, deciding uh, to overturn 50 years of Roe. They were already putting things in place uh, to make it illegal. Uh, the only abortion clinic in, in my city uh, closed over the weekend. Um, this is a giant step backwards. Um, but, but we have to make sure, and I applaud uh, the council member for his courageousness and his creativity in this moment as a former council member, because cities have to decide how they're going to use their resources. And depending on how the resources are used at the state level and, and the municipal level will dictate how this impacts uh, the women of our cities and states.